Do you feel like the art you're making is just above your level? Well, how do you get there? What are the steps? And are there secrets that pros are keeping from you? Well, you asked the right guy. Welcome to Art Mentor, my name is Sean, and today I'm gonna to teach you my 10-step system that's gonna help you break down your barriers, surpass your limits, and achieve your unlimited potential. And it's gonna start with you doing this. Step one is really simple, but it's gonna be the hardest thing that you're ever gonna do with your artwork, which is just that you're gonna start with just being overwhelmed with all of these potentials and all these possibilities and all these different things that you could do. But my friend, life is real simple for you here. Just pick one direction, just pick a direction. Doesn't matter what direction you go in. And oftentimes people will feel a lot of anxiety about this because they're overwhelmed with all the different possibilities. But listen, there's no direction you can pick that is a wrong direction. The only wrong direction you can pick is going away from your art, from being distracted from it, from not doing it. So the first thing you just have to do is just commit to one direction. Doesn't matter if it's for commercial purposes. Doesn't matter if it's for personal growth either. Just pick one direction. So my friend, here's the number one thing I need you to do is just come up with three ideas that you could start to do right now. Three ideas that are on your radar for what you want to do and where your goals align to. Just make that list and come up with, again, three things that you need to start to do to work on your artwork right now. And that's the first step that most people don't do because they're just gonna flounder and guess their way through what they should be doing. Are you one of these people? Step two, as you're gonna start to create any artwork, whether it's a practice or you have a big, awesome, amazing illustration in mind, some cool painting in mind, some cool sculpture in mind, what you are probably going to be met with, and tell me if this is you down below, do you get overwhelmed at everything that you have to do in order to realize it to the level that you want it to be? Because why? Because you're looking at other people online and you're comparing yourself against them and you're going, ah, oh, man, this is just way too far above what I'm currently able to do, or I've never done that before. How do I do that? Just pick one single focus in the current artwork that you're working on. It's too much for you to look at just an entire illustration and be like, oh my God, I need to get better at backgrounds. I need to be get better at coloring. I need to get better at light. I need to get better at rendering. And I need to get better at poses. I need to get better at anatomy. Oh my God, I just suck at everything. You can just hear the frustration and anxiety and I can hear it from you too. And you feel that way too, don't you? So instead of doing that, y'all, just choose one thing. What do you want to do in your current artwork? Do you want to focus more on the expressive and emotive qualities of it? Do you want to just focus on creating a more dynamic set of light sources? Do you want to just focus on your color? Do you want to focus more on the personal connection and the narrative of it? That's all. Just focus on one thing. And if you accomplish that one thing at the expense of everything else, then you have succeeded in growing. And believe it or not, what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually grow multiple things around that one thing. Because nothing is ever that simple, is it? The big thing here is to not be focused on the end product, but rather be focused on one singular aspect of it. Now for step three, we're gonna travel back to step one here. And I want you to take a look at that list of those three things that you want to do. What is it? Do you need to do a little bit more learning? Do you need to do a little bit more practice? Do you need to start to develop some skills in how do you create better anatomical structures for your characters or whatever you're trying to make, okay? I want you to take a look at that list and just ask yourself this. What of those things can you start to do right now in the next 10 minutes? Because if you can work in what I call 10 minutes sprints, then you're going to get farther ahead of everybody else who's just going to sit at that list and they're just going to be really frustrated and they're not going to do anything about it because they're going to feel anxious and overwhelmed and they're going to be crippled by paralysis by analysis, which is when you cannot make a decision because there are too many decisions to be made. Y'all, the way we blast past this is real simple. We just have to commit to one of those directions and just think, what can I do in the next 10 minutes, okay? If you know that you need to get better at how to paint skin tone, Okay, go watch a few videos on it and then go ahead and apply it. Don't sit there for three days watching 87 YouTube videos on how to do it. That's not going to help you get any better, is it now? You know that. You're just stroking your time and ego and wasting efforts, making your pantomiming what should be done instead. So what I want you to do is just look at that and say, what can I start to do in the next 10 minutes? Because the better that you get at actually just making quicker decisions, the better you're going to be able to do at taking action so towards becoming the artist that you want to be. Doesn't that sound great to you? Now, while you're in the process of your art making, okay, I understand all of the different 
fears and anxieties and the frustrations that you're going to feel because you currently feel like what you're doing right now is just above your level, don't you? So one of the big things that I want you to do is not to get overwhelmed at everything that you have to do in order to finish it. That's not a sustainable way to work, my friend. Instead of looking at everything and being like, oh my God, I do all of this. I gotta paint the background and I gotta do that and I gotta put in colors here and I gotta render that. No, my friend. So what I want you to do at this point is just go ahead and focus on five minute decisions. If you can commit to making decisions every about five to 10 minutes, then you are going to blast through everybody else that is going to be crippled by potential and crippled by possibilities and crippled by what they maybe do or don't know how to do. If you're currently painting some type of an illustration and you're like, oh my God, I don't know how to do that hand or I don't know how to do that magic effect. Okay, cool. What can you do in the next five minutes instead? Can you go ahead and can you paint a face? Can you paint hair? Can you paint clothes? Can you go ahead and just render? You can go ahead and you can balance. Okay, I'm comfortable with this and then launch back to, I'm uncomfortable with that. Let me try that for about five to 10 more minutes and then I'll bounce back to something else. This goes to, by the way, with you feeling like perhaps, and tell me if this is you down below, do you ever feel like you start to want to take in the direction you're like, oh my God, I'm so afraid to do it. And no problem. Just go ahead and duplicate your layer if you're working with this digitally and work at it for a few minutes and then, I want you to commit to, again, a five minute decision. After about five to 20 minutes, go ahead and merge that layer down so that you have to proceed forward. Y'all, the worst thing that you can do is just belabor making decisions while you are producing because when you are just stuck in the process of trying to pick a direction, you're actually losing the potential for what you could do because you're thinking too hard about it. Instead, what you're gonna find is that the more that you produce and the more that you're actually productive, the better you're gonna feel. Now here's a real secret sauce item for you. If you want to be a better artist and you want to feel better about what you're producing and how to get there, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel. I love to produce content like this that helps you all out and helps you achieve your potential. And if you're into that too, I'll see you every single week for more content just like this. Now let's move on. Now during step five here, you're basically right in the middle of your project and you are just going to be hit after hit after hit of things you don't know how to do and things you wish you could do better. And and you're gonna be looking towards the end product thinking like, oh my God, how am I ever gonna get there? But here's what I wanna let you know that's really important about step five is that your process is going to combat all of your fears and anxieties, okay? Because if you're only looking towards the end, if you're only trying to find the finish line and it's 27 miles ahead of you and you're only on mile two of this marathon, then yes, I understand your frustration because you don't understand how to get there and you can't see the end product. But y'all, that's not a sustainable way to work. That's a sustainable way for you to burn out, isn't it? So instead, here's one simple thing you can do during step five is just make a checklist of what do you have to do and what what can you do along the way? So what does a checklist look like? This could be just simply, you can look at it as, okay, I have to paint that hand and I have to paint that face and I have to paint that hair and I have to paint that armor and I have to paint those clothes, okay? Now listen, you can do this in a very sequential type A method because if you're a type A person just like me, let me know about it. But if you're not, here's another suggestion for you too. Just put these out in absolutely no order. You can just kind of make it a little mind map of all these things going around. I gotta paint the background. I gotta add the lighting on it, whatever. Just add them all out. And that way, here's the great part about this on step five is that you can go ahead and you will feel good because you are actually hitting checkpoints on here. This is just like, do y'all ever play Mario Kart and you get the little notification whenever you complete a lap? Look, that's you. You are making a little artistic lap and you're feeling like you're getting closer and closer and closer to that end goal, okay? Because here's the major thing I want you to know is that progress equals happiness. And the more progress that you're making on your artwork, the less anxious you're gonna feel and the more clarity you're gonna gain from it and the easier you're gonna feel from it. Have you ever experienced this before? because this is how you're gonna get to the next level. So for the next step, this is when typically you're gonna be done or done-ish with your artwork. Instead of you just declaring, boom, I'm done with this, everything's great to go, okay? Instead of that, here's what I wanna challenge you on. Just work one more hour. The second that you proclaim yourself, I'm done with this. All right, just wanna wash my hands of this, right? I encourage you just work for one more hour. Really take a good hard look at that, study it for like just a few minutes and then commit to just working on it for one more hour. This is something I started to do a few years ago and it majorly helped me level up my art. It helped me see the little imperfections that I was overlooking before because have you ever experienced this? Have you ever looked at your artwork the day after you think that you're done with it and then you just go, oh, 
I noticed that, and man, I gotta fix that. Or maybe you're just like, oh, I'm just done with that piece. I don't even wanna fix it anymore, right? So instead of that, just work it out for one more hour. And then here's what I want you to do after that, okay? Here's what I call my reach principle. So take a look at your artwork the next day and ask yourself this, if I could work on that for one more hour, what else would you do with it? Okay, I do this, this, and that. Okay, cool. What if you had two more hours? What would you do to that? Okay, well, I would definitely go ahead and fix that up and I would re-angle this and I would make that a little bit better. All right, cool. What if you could work that for five more hours? What would you do? And the reason why I'm asking you this is because oftentimes when I work with my clients, when I work with my mentees, when I talk to other artists, I'll ask them this, like, hey, what could you do if you had this amount of time to it? And they'll have the answer. So what I wanna let you know, friend, is this, you have the answer. And what you may be afraid to do is invest the time into it. But y'all, here's the thing. Why do you wanna continuously reinvest the time into half creating things that are half at the level that you want it to be instead of just creating all the time and putting forth those efforts into doing the things that you wanna do? Because at the end of the day, you know what you want to do, but oftentimes you might be afraid to take those steps. Have you ever experienced that? So step seven comes at you after you've applied the reach principle, after you've finished the actual product you're currently working on. I want you to take a real good hard assessment of that and ask yourself this one question, what's my next focus gonna be? And then rather than again, looking at your entire artwork and being like, oh my God, the color theory sucks and the composition's terrible and this looks stiff and lame and static posed and uh, this over here just doesn't look as interesting as it could, okay? Rather than doing that again, starting to be overwhelmed with everything, I want you to choose again, one more focus and just go for it, just be committed to it. One of the worst things you can do is let your indecision drive you rather than your innovation. Y'all, here's one thing I wanna let you artists know is that the mental labor of indecision is horribly disproportionate to the actual physical, mental, and artistic and creative creative labor of you actually creating the piece. And that mental labor of indecision, it's what's gonna kill your creativity and it's gonna make you burn out if you're not aware of that. Now the next step brings about one of what I would say is the most tragic misunderstandings and porous practices of most artists, which is when I start to take a look at the reference game. Now, before you go ahead and let your eyes sink back into your head or click away, hear me out here, because most artists, when I talk to them, if they are feeling dissatisfied with their artwork, if they're feeling like their artwork is not at the level that they're currently at, and they are not achieving what they want to achieve, the first thing I'm gonna ask them to show me is, hey, let me see your references. And then they're gonna pull up like three or four. Y'all, I think you misunderstand imagination very greatly. Listen, I understand that obviously you got great ideas, but listen, what is the root word of imagination? Image. How can you image, imagine something that you don't know what it looks like? Or if you are only working off of what your brain thinks something looks like rather than what it could look like or does look like, then you don't have the proper imagination and the proper training that has cultivated that imagination. So references are not there as a one-to-one. -one. References do not exist for you to copy. References are there as possibilities, as inspirations. They they need to be present in that game or else you are going to continuously create the same mistakes. So as your action step for step eight here, make sure that you assemble at least 15 to 25 references for anything that you're trying to do, whether it's just a single character, whether it's an entire illustration, 15 to 20, again, assembling possibilities, not one-to-one, -one. you're not a copy machine. Do this, I guarantee you, you are going to have a phenomenal gain in your artworks within the next three pieces. Try it out. Now I'm gonna go ahead for this next step and I'm gonna drop a word on you that you probably aren't gonna like, but I'm gonna tell you, you need to be comfortable with and most people misunderstand. And that word is discipline. Whoa, I know. I know how we feel about that as artists. And I'm gonna tell you why, because if you hear the word discipline, what do you think of? Let me ask you that. You're probably gonna think of some authoritative figures in your life. Maybe it's a parent or an aunt or a family member that was really harsh and critical of you. Or how about this? Does that remind you of school? Does that remind you of harsh administrators? Does that remind you of harsh teachers? Does that remind you of your art teacher that sucked? All of those 
are usually what most people think about when they think of discipline or do they think of discipline being something punitive? Like, oh, you're gonna get in trouble. I'm not saying that you need to develop the ability to hate yourself or to punish yourself, no friend. But listen, I wanna reframe for you, my friend, what is discipline? Because you need to understand this as you're going to get better. And if you are very sincere in growing your artistic potential, my friend, you need to redevelop and reimagine what that is. At its core, y'all, what discipline is, it's love. It is a deep-seated love for yourself, and it is a way of you communicating through your efforts that you love and appreciate yourself so much that you are going to put forth the efforts to grow yourself as a person. Why? Because you respect yourself, because you appreciate yourself, because you see the amazing potential and what art is going to do for you in your life or in your bank account or for your professional opportunities or all the above. Discipline is not the way that you are going to hurt yourself. It is the way that you are going to bring out the highest version of yourself through self-love and self-interest. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is not toxic. It is actually more toxic for you to ignore and deny yourself that love that art could bring into your life. And on another note too, you might say, well, Sean, I love multiple things. Okay, cool. But you have to prioritize that list a little bit because if you're watching 12 hours of Netflix, what you're also saying there, is that you love Netflix more than you love yourself. And certainly that you love that more than you love your potential. Are you okay with that? Because I think you're better than that. In the next step, now you've got a pretty clear image of what you wanna do and how you wanna do it. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is to stop needing to look up the same references from the same artists, from your same exact inspirations. And let's just compile that and put that all into one singular place. So one of the things I'm gonna encourage you to develop is an influence map. Now influence maps were pretty big about like 10, 15 years ago. Here's some examples right here. You might've seen these online before. Do artists even still make these? I'm not too sure, but I want to uh, revive this practice here because it's going to really level up your game. Because if you can make one of these for yourself and you can see, boom, here are my biggest reference inspirations and artists that really inspire me and artists that I want to be like, then you're going to have a constant source of inspiration. And listen, y'all, it's not enough for you just to go ahead and slap this together in Canva or slap this together in Photoshop, whatever program you're going to use, and just let that linger and lurk and die somewhere in the recesses of your hard drive or online, okay? Instead, no, that's not a good practice. Instead, y'all, go ahead and print this thing out. Go ahead and put that somewhere on your wall. Put that in your office. Put that above where you do your artwork, okay? Put that on the back of your computer. Want another practice if you can't print it out? Can you put that as the background on your phone? Can you go ahead and get rid of your picture of like some dank meme or like some anime waifu or maifu version of whoever you have on your background on your phone on your computer? Can you set this as your desktop background? Can you, instead of you having a slideshow of your ooh, ultra special princess cats and dogs and everything, instead of that, y'all, can you go ahead and just make a slideshow of all of the artworks that inspire you. That way, again, what we wanna do here is we want to inundate ourselves with the inspirations and remind ourselves of our goals and objectives and things that we want to do. And what we also will do by this is we're gonna have a constant source of inspiration for us to just turn on our computer, pick up our phone, sit down before we start making artwork. We're gonna study it and be like, hmm, how do I make artwork like that? Wouldn't that be super powerful for you? Now, before you're ready to go ahead and you're ready to go ahead and jump into all 10 of these steps here, what I want you to know is what you need to do, whether you are starting out, whether you wanna be a professional, and that is how to surpass every other artist and what skills and habits you need to build for that, which you can check on this video right here. It's really gonna help set you apart.